Many legendary rock stars have blessed us with their music, their moves, and their magic. But nobody could move like David Lee Roth, the lead singer of Van Halen. Well, the first one. He was like a rock and roll ninja on stage. Frickin' acrobatic. A man who truly embraced the label of rock star. Always experimenting with his voice, and his body, and drugs. But yeah, this guy's vocals, well, they have the power to scream like a drug-fueled wildcat making a fresh kill. And all that spandex. So much spandex. And so much hair. And so much drugs. And sex. And rock and roll. But hey, that's the life. Right, everybody? I don't know. But yeah, he fully embraced that life to the point where it it broke him. It made him crazy. Rumor has it David Lee Roth would literally go crazy. And it happened enough that the road crew of Van Halen kept a straight jacket on hand because they often needed to restrain this maniac musician. Wow. WTF. But yeah, like all rock stars, he must shrivel up and fade away. Or burn out. The choice is theirs. So yeah, did a life of hard partying, hard rocking, and hard rolling take its toll on good old Davy Boy? Or is he one of those rock star warriors who made it through all the way to old age? Yeah, is he still rocking away into his golden years, but not on a rocking chair? Rocking kind of music? Well, if you want to know, class, just pay attention, because today I will be your hot teacher. Yeah, that's right. You really got me. So yeah, let's dance the night away as we jump into another episode and find out just what the f*** happened to David Lee Roth. Because everybody wants some. Everybody wants some! But to truly understand what the f**k happened to David Lee Roth, we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1954, Indiana, but he grew up in California. It may come as no surprise that little David Lee Roth was a bit of a problem child, and his parents would send him to therapy as well as a horse ranch for troubled teens to help calm down his eccentric behavior. While working as a hospital orderly, young Roth would attend Pasadena City College, where he would meet a pair of brothers named Eddie and Alex, whose last name would become legendary. Van Halen. Yeah, their last name is Van Halen. Like the band, because that they're the guys in the band. It wasn't an instant connection, not love at first sight, as both David and the Van Halen brothers were members of different bands at the time. Roth was the lead singer of Red Ball Jets, and the Van Halen brothers were in a group called Mammoth. But then they finally joined forces in 1974, when Roth joined Mammoth and suggested that they change the band's name to their last name, because David Lee Roth simply loved how it sounded. Van Halen. Which is kind of funny because David Lee Roth has a reputation of being kind of self-centered and, you know, egotistical, I guess. Yet he was the one who suggested they name the band after not him. This just adds to the mystery that is David Lee Roth. He's so complex. There's so many layers. In 1978, Van Halen would release their first self-titled album that would earn the band national acclaim and heavy airplay with now classic tracks like You Really Got Me, Running With The Devil, and Ain't Talking About Love, as well as Eruption that has the greatest guitar solo like ever. Van Halen would go on tour with Journey and Black Sabbath in support of the album, which would go on to be certified diamond, selling over 12 million copies. Speaking of diamonds, that's what they called him, Diamond Dave. Yeah, David Lee Roth grew into the perfect frontman. He was such a standout performer that people started calling him Diamond Dave, and it was perfect, and it fit, and it stuck. Because he shines like a diamond, and his name is Dave. 
His on-stage antics were wild and crazy and wacky and oh my goodness WTF. So much energy, so much fun. Too much fun, maybe? It was infectious. As well as his off-stage shenanigans. They were also the stuff of legend. He did unspeakable things. The early 1980s would see the band release several more now classic albums, including Van Halen 2, Women and Children First, Fair Warning, Diver Down, and 1984. With songs such as Dance the Night Away, and The Cradle Will Rock, Jump, Panama, and Hot for Teacher. All which became genuine classics that still to this very day receive continuous airplay on the radio and, and the streaming. And of course these tunes were accompanied by music videos that helped put MTV on the map. Every map. But early on there was tension amongst the bandmates. David Lee Roth was always demanding to be the center of attention in a band named after the other people. David's self-centered behavior went as far as shooting album covers without the rest of Van Halen. Of course, Diamond Dave's antics weren't just for show. Offstage, Roth was as much the sex and drug crazed rocker he portrayed on stage. His life was a seemingly endless party. You know, which featured all that sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It went so far that David Lee Roth even had a color-coded system to tell his roadies which girls in the audience he wanted backstage. He would be like, her, front row, green, seven to the left. Obviously, when you're a man of massive talent, the women, they throw themselves at you. And when you're in that situation, there's only one thing you can do. Ensure your wiener for $1 million, whom he would nickname Little Elvis. Oh. Gross. Of course, his sexual shenanigans were equally matched by his drug-fueled adventures, with countless stories of David and that illegal nose candy that he loved so much. <laughs> oh! Right up there. But all was not right with the band. Despite dominating the charts for several years, there was a rift growing from within. David Lee Roth was more interested in making fun party songs about women and sex and drugs and rocking and rolling, while Eddie Van Halen was more interested in a darker, more intimate sound. You know, that age-old story. Creative, Creative differences. differences. It would all come to a head in 1985, a year after their first ever number one LP. 1984, when David Lee Roth would release a solo EP called Crazy From The Heat, which would contain the hit cover of California Girls, that would go on to have one of the most iconic music videos of the early MTV generation. Roth says that he wanted to test the waters of a solo career due to the fact that he felt Van Halen's music had become gloomy. And of course, these creative differences would lead to David Lee Roth being fired from the band, replacing David Lee Roth with the red rocker himself, Sammy Hagar. Of course, Sammy Hagar quickly became the arch nemesis of David Lee Roth, kinda deepening the wound when Sammy Hagar ended up having a number of hits with Van Halen. I mean, Van Hagar. At times like these, I often like to quote Joe Dirt. Here's my favorite bands, ACDC, Van Halen, not Van Hagar, Skinner, Def Lab. All right, I want you to settle down. Don't make me call your probie officer here. So for the next decade, the band continued to have success until splitting ways with Hagar also due to creative differences around 1996. Thus, we ask the age-old question, who was the better Van Halen frontman, David or Sammy? The world may never know. That's, it's David. Hagar is fine, but David Lee Roth reigns supreme. If you disagree, please yell at me as you comment your comment in the comments. And while you're there, you might as well like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. 
After that, David released his first solo LP, Eat 'em and Smile, topping out on the Billboard 200 at number 4, as well as selling 2 million copies in the US, followed by the second LP, Skyscraper, which would feature the hit single Just Like Paradise, and would top out on the Billboard Hot 200 at number 6, and again sell over 2 million copies in the United States alone. The tour would be notorious for David Lee Roth's stage antics, with him doing some wild and crazy things like surfing above the audience. But of course, most of his new bandmates would soon quit, and I'm sure David Lee Roth is to blame. David's next solo album would be 1991's A Little Ain't Enough, that would only chart at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 200 yet still achieve gold status, which is 500,000 units sold. Still pretty good, but not good enough. The slow climb down the charts for Roth was showing the changing of the landscape in terms of the popular music that the cool kids were listening to. David Lee Roth's style of fun hard rock was fading away as the rise of darker grunge stuff, you know, like Nirvana and Soundgarden, that would begin to dominate the airwaves. This change in the times would become even more obvious when in 1994, David Lee Roth would release his next solo album titled Your Filthy Little Mouth, which would only reach number 78 on the charts, and would be his first solo album to fail to achieve any type of recognition like gold, silver, or platinum. It didn't win any of those medals at the Music Olympics. His next album wouldn't fare any better. After being dropped by Warner Brother Records, David Lee Roth would release DLR Band, which would only chart at 172 on the Billboard 200, and sell a underwhelming 51,000 albums. A far cry from the 12 million he was selling in the days of old. The good old days. After that, David Lee Roth would release just one more solo album, 2003's Diamond Dave, which failed to even chart the Billboard 200. Womp womp. Also around this time, the impossible possibled, when the mortal enemies, David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar went on tour. Together. These aging rockers put on quite the show, that was kind of desperate, yet kind of awesome at the same time. Some may think that this means these rival frontmen had buried the hatchet, but no. David and Sammy completely avoided each other. Despite both being legendary singers from Van Halen, they claim to have nothing in common. Uh, where are you at with David Lee Roth? And the reason I ask, Nowhere. I, I've, never, I, I've never been friends with Dave. I never even yeah. knew him. I went on tour, him and I went to tour together and we did huge business, but we never spoke. It would be like, you know, I, he's, he's a weird guy. In 2004, you may have noticed a certain rock star sitting at the poker table in an episode of The Sopranos. Well, do you know who that rock star was? Do you know? Can you guess? It's, it, was, it was David Lee Roth. Look at it. Also, in 2013, for some reason, he was in a Japanese short film called Tokyo Story. Yet the biggest story of Roth's later resume was when he and former bandmates Eddie and Alex Van Halen reunited and became best friends forever again, burying all those hatchets. So many hatchets were buried. So yeah, David Lee Roth rejoined Van Halen in 2007 and went on a 40-date arena tour. This tour would commence in September of 2007 and end in June 2008, and rack up a band record, $93 million worth of ticket sales. A few years later, Van Halen would release what would ultimately become their final album, A Different Kind of Truth, with David Lee Roth triumphantly returning as the frontman. The album debuted at number two on the Billboard charts. David Lee Roth and the rest of the guys of Van Halen proved that they could still rock. In 2015, Van Halen would perform for the first time ever on American television on the Jimmy Kimmel Live show. 
However, in true David Lee Roth fashion, the show had a few hiccups, including Roth cracking his nose while on stage and needing medical assistance. David Lee Roth is one of the most original and unique voices in the history of rock and roll. He epitomized what it means to truly be a rock star. But here is what makes David Lee Roth so different. In the late 90s, when he was still one of the most recognizable rock stars on the planet, in his free time, he would train as an emergency medical technician in New York City a license he maintains to this very day. Can you imagine having a medical emergency? And as these medical professionals are loading you into the ambulance, you look up and you see the face of the former lead singer of Van Halen. And he's checking your vitals and stuff. David Lee Roth is also a master martial artist, apparently. You know what, yeah, a skill that he brought to the stage. He trained in several forms of martial arts since he was 12 years old. Just think about this for a second. David Lee Roth is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu trained, emergency medical technician, global legendary rock star. All of that is on his resume. With no new album since the year 2012, Roth has continued touring and playing gigs around the world, including appearing with the Boston Pops Orchestra and his residencies in Las Vegas. It also seems like David Lee Roth got into the vlogging YouTuber world with The Roth Show. Like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to get those notifications. And in the year 2020, after the death of Eddie Van Halen, he would share a previously unreleased track, Somewhere Over the Rainbow Bar and Grill, in tribute to the man that Roth called his brother. And so yeah, here we are today. Where is David Lee Roth? What the f is it doing? Well, he's out there living in one of his homes in New York City, Los Angeles, or Tokyo, and enjoying a nice life in retirement. This big retirement news was something that he announced after his sold-out residency at the House of Blues in Las Vegas, which ended in January 2022. So I hope you enjoy your retirement, David Lee Roth. You've earned it. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to David Lee Roth, because he's doing just fine. 